How do you create something that's different than everyone else? You do it differently than everyone else. Here at Copeland Creative, we specialize in telling captivating stories of wild people, wild things, and wild places. We don't just capture the story, we immerse ourselves in it. We are a diverse, multi-talented media house based in North Georgia, and if you have a story that needs told, we want to help you tell it. There we is. All right, we're live. You look dark. We look dark? Yeah. My things are way down, apparently. Okay. Uh, we're going to give everybody a few minutes because we didn't warn them. We were, Did we warn them? Did no, we do the podcast? No, we did okay, I think we did. Okay. Nope. Um, no warning. It's just Ryer and I, Clay and Joe, are in New Mexico filming fun stuff, and I forgot to get a drink. Dead mm. gum it. It's too late now. I know. It's too late. I know. Do what you doing? Just going live on this for a second. Live at the bottom. There you go. Yeah. It's every app is different. It's I know annoying. it's crazy. Oh, here we go. Can we go like just just a little bit further? It's checking the connection. You just gonna stay like that till somebody comes in here? Uh huh. <laughs> Let, I mean, it is one forty-five on a work day. I know. Well, we'll see how many people actually work. <laughs> I would like watch podcasts and stuff if um, if what I was working on wasn't editing. There we go. All right. All right. Well, we got some folks. So, folks, uh, we're going live on YouTube. Uh, so we're here to announce that because we did not announce that earlier. On our, uh, on our, on the stories. Yeah, we're, this is the last minute, because this is the last chance we're going to have for like the next two and a half weeks, so we're doing a live podcast. Oh. Derek from New York. Derek's trying to get on from New York on the live. Is that what he's doing? Yeah, he sent a real request to be in the live video. I don't know if you know me. <laughs> yeah, I've never. We know you. I feel like it keeps popping up and going away. I feel like he's trolling us. <laughs> I don't even know how that works. I've never done that. If you hit on there, it'll like d- it'll it'll like do the screen. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> well, go over to YouTube because we're about to be doing a live film review on the YouTube. We can probably just leave that up for the live too if we wanted to. I mean, heck with it. No, we want people to go to YouTube. Yes. Okay. All right. I feel you. You gotta right. go to YouTube because we also have videos uh yeah we uh, we do have stuff. accompanying accompanying videos for this one you're right and we also have uh you know new video content on the uh new video content in the on the YouTube Is there a reason when I make proxies and toggle the proxies button it still lags with 4K footage there probably is a reason. Uh, it could be many reasons. It could be um, depending on what proxies you make. Um, they Maybe they're a little heavier than what your computer wants. Also, um, depends on your computer specs as well. So uh, I would need to know kind of what computer you're running and then also what, uh, what format you're making your proxies in. Um, because there's multiple, there's like different types of proxies, and some of them are heavier than other kinds. So, uh, if you let me know those things, maybe I can help. It also could be Premiere just kind of being a jerk, because um, that is known to happen on occasion. MacBook Pro 13 inch uh, and low resolution GoPro footage. What, GoPro footage. That's um, all you had to say. Well, he's making proxies, so oh. in theory, it should be better. What um, system specs is the is the MacBook Pro? I've been having an issue because I'm trying to do something that pr- the Premiere manual says that I should be able to do, and I'm not. It's not working, and I'm not sure why it's not working. And it's one of those things. Uh, I've found that that 
YouTube tutorials only go so far as far as like the knowledge base. Mm -hmm. like if you want to find out how to do effects and just general premiere stuff, they're great. As soon as you try to like do anything kind of a little bit advanced, there's no tutorials. There's no information anywhere ever. So I've been trying to figure that out. Um, I've been trying to import a metadata list because we were given a bunch of footage that did not have the metadata files associated with it. And I really want the metadata files so that I can organize the clips based on when they were shot. Uh, and it's not importing the file that it said. Uh, so specs as in like, um, what operating system are you running? How many gigs of RAM? Um, how many cores does it have? Like if you go in the Apple, like the Apple menu, and you go about this Mac, there will be like four or five main uh, like specs. And that's basically telling you what the hardware capabilities are of your computer. And that has a large um, effect on how well your computer runs different programs, especially programs like Premiere that are um, very heavy on system resources. So if you're running like a, if you got five gigs of RAM, then it really doesn't matter what you do. Your, uh, your computer will lag. But if you got like 64 gigs of RAM, then uh, it's not a computer problem. It's a Premiere problem or something similar. JG said, hey, ladies. So What's up, JG? Yeah, I would say if you're on your Mac, like if you're on your Mac right now, you'll be able to look at it. If not, go look at that. You could even screenshot it and, and uh, message us, and then uh, we'll be able to help you a little bit better because uh, that could be some of it. But usually, the, I mean, the proxies are meant to help with that kind of thing, but if you just have a, a computer that's not real powerful, it could still lag a little bit. You could also try decreasing the um, playback resolution. So instead of playing it back at full res, you could do a half or a quarter. Um, that will help sometimes. There's a lot of factors, so kind of start from one and try to narrow them down. All right, we're going to run over to the actual podcast. Y'all go over to YouTube. It's much better, I promise. Yes. Um, yeah, take those screenshots, shoot them over to us, and we'll try to help. Uh, we're going to go to YouTube, so uh, y'all go over there, and we're going to get started. See y'all. The Redneck Tech Podcast is brought to you by Mike'sArchery.com. They're a one-stop shop for virtually everything archery, bow hunting, and for your next outdoor adventure. Mike's Archery has been at the top of the archery game for over 50 years, and they want to give listeners of the Redneck Tech Podcast 10% off their entire online store using the code REDNECK10, all one word. Just put the code in before you check out, and your boys will hook you up. The guys at Mike's have always been good to us, and now they can be good to you too. Visit mikesarchery.com and get your gear now. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Yeah. You want it? Mm -hmm. Redneck Tech Podcast, episode 180. We are doing a film review today. So we did one of those, how long ago was that? A couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. we did one for, who did we do that for? Nick Merrill? Yes. So we did one for Nick Ner Merrill, a guy that came to our class. And so we've had three more sent over, one of which we cannot show you because it's secret squirrel stuff. The second of which is an hour long. We haven't had a chance to watch it. And I don't think we can watch an hour podcast on the podcast watch it back through again, talk about it. It'd be like a three-and-a-half-hour podcast. We might, if we have no, nothing to do, which isn't going to happen. Uh, and then the third one... We might one, just have to watch it and yeah, then take and some then, notes. And, and take some notes. Watch it and then, look. and then the third one is uh, one from a buddy named Derek Craig, and he sent it to me, I can tell you exactly when he sent this email, on 526. So, uh, actually, he sent it on May 11th, my bad. So, that's when I replied, it was on 526. So, he sent this on May 11th, 
and we're just now getting to do that. But um, it's something new we're, I guess we're doing. Um, we did the one, and now we're getting stuff sent to us. So um, we're going to review them because it's fun, and we like looking at other people's stuff. And he did give me permission. I want Ryder to be my second uh, my second thing on here. Um, he says, my second opinion, he says, feel free to butcher it. Feel free to live butcher, LOL, a film that I won. <laughs> so we're not going to butcher it unless it needs butchering. So we're not going to make any promises either. So we actually did figure out the audio too, so we actually can reroute this through the MacBook so you guys can hear nice, clean, pretty audio this time. Didn't we figure it out last time, or did we We not? didn't. We Remember, we stuck a thing up against the speaker. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we kind of redneck engineered it like we do. Mm -hmm. But I actually like got up here five minutes early and figured out how to route it through the board this time. So, freaking professionals. I feel like you can't really call it five minutes early if there wasn't a set time. You just got up here. And I was here that. five minutes before you, so I'm considering it five minutes early. Yeah, well, I was taking care of things. Mm. I had things to do. Okay, so um, do we want to roll right into that, or do we want to talk about the BRCC stuff first? Uh, that's up to you. We can talk about what we've been doing, or we can let's just talk about that a little bit. Let's get into that first. So, the last so Joe and Clay are currently in Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, New Mexico. It's close. They're currently yeah. in New Mexico it's doing a, close. another Bergara, same, same same, a new a new Bergara boot leather um, episode with Chris Trujillo, a really good buddy of ours. And they're currently two days into a four or three day shoot. I thought it was only three. Let me would have to check the calendar. But anyway, they're out there um, looking at big velvet bulls, making us jealous here at the office. I leave tomorrow to go on a um, camping trip with my kids through the Fourth of July weekend and week. All the guys are off next week, so y'all not going to hear nothing from us next week. We're actually going to take a week off. Like we're blocking it off. Don't call us. Well, you can call me, but. We're going to be off out of the office um, next week, so we hope you guys enjoy your 4th of July. But um, was it last week or the week before you were in Oklahoma with Black Rifle? It, I came back. Uh, it would have been like a week ago now. Okay. Like so a it's week ago. Two weeks ago I left for it. Okay. So you were there for four days. In Oklahoma, mm -hmm. doing a shoot with Travis Pastrana and most of the Nitro, Nitro Circus crew, right? Yeah, we were there. But you um, were doing a task you've never, we've never done just straight up photography before. I did get to do it one time on that on that um, audit hunt. Oh yeah, well that was kind of like not we weren't hired specifically for that. Though. Yes. Um, and yeah, you killed did. it naturally. We did good job. High five. We did uh, all photos. I did not. Do you roll a single frame of video? N I did on my phone for oh. like just mm. shit, like random, like for myself. Yeah. Uh, but no, I did. I came back with zero video files from my professional cameras <laughs> for delivery to a client. And you, you rolled in. No, there. that's not true. I did. I had to fill in as a shooter um, because we they were shooting a thing. We shot this whole skit. Um, the day before, and then a card corrupted, oh, and no. they lost all of it. So we had to go back the next day. But we did all the people that we had access to the day before were not available the next day. So we had to pull people from the crew to fill in on the skit. And uh, I was like, "I'll run a secondary camera." So I ran somebody's um, Sony mirrorless, and the it had. A very nice display, like a external monitor on it, and then it died, and I was trying to film in the direct sunlight, and so I, I don't know if it was any good at all. <laughs> it's, it's not my camera. I was like, I think this is focused. I can't tell because I can't see the screen. Yeah. But uh, so I did, I guess, technically film two clips. Oh, okay, nice. Two two whole clips. I was a very overqualified stand-in nice. for the video. Well, the um, you rolled in there deep on the photo side though. Mm -hmm. Real deep, yeah. Double R fives. Double R fives. Did, that, did that you did you turn any heads with that? No. Nobody knew. Nobody cared. I don't think anybody. That's unfortunate. I was kind of hoping you would big dick Rick somebody. I don't think anybody no, like cares. Oh, I don't think anybody. I noticed that stuff though. Yeah, there but there was nobody a guy when well, we does. were just at the Tetons. There was a guy over there came to take pictures, or he was taking pictures with his camera, and I could tell it was a Canon. Me, he was like thirty yards away, 
And I'm like, well, we wanted to take a group picture, and I didn't want to have to drag the cooler out of the thing, set it up, put it on a timer. I was like, let's just get this guy to take it. He's running a Canon. Surely he can figure it out. He could figure it out. He was running 90D full auto. I had to mm. literally hold his hand and say, push this button, do this, framed it for him. And I was like, just touch the shutter button for me, please. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I noticed stuff like that. I was I was at a brewery the other day watching a band perform, and they had a photographer. And so I was watching him uh, do photo things and just, you know, being and a little judgy. But I was about to say, you judge the hell out of him the yeah. whole time. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, which I mean, I don't, maybe the photos are good. I didn't see them. Just you know, I you know, you could just like look at somebody taking pictures, and you're like, yeah, they ain't getting the they they're not getting the steezy they're, shots. They're not like they are getting shots, but they're not getting the shots that I think that I would get. Which yeah. obviously we all get different shots, and we're all at different points in our careers. So you know, it's I it's not I can be a little judgy, but also at the same time, you know. I'm sure he's doing his best. So uh, I, what I did see though is he would he would like have his camera. Hey, number one, if you don't want to look like a noob, <laughs> when you run your camera, don't use the like if it's a Canon and it comes with a Canon strap, don't use the Canon strap <laughs> slung directly on your neck where the camera hangs right here. Nobody does that. <laughs> That's not a like you want to look like you've never run a camera before. Do, do that. Do that. You le like if you're gonna run a strat, which I ran. A strat, That's a dad move. Yeah, you're <laughs> like a you're like a tourist at Yosemite, right? <laughs> if you want to look like a pro, at least run the strap one side under an arm. If you want to be a real pro, get a like aftermarket strap. That's meant for that. Or just go no strap. I do that a lot if I'm just running one camera. But That's what like she the said. camera right here, like that. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that means, and I don't want to explore it live because <laughs> okay. I got some ideas, and we can't say those live. Uh, yeah, run it, run it under one side. Um, but what I did see is like, okay, so he'd be taking like some pictures, and then this awesome moment would happen, and he would put his camera away and get his phone up, and I was and and I was like, okay, maybe he's doing like reels or something, and then I like saw him just taking pictures on the phone, and I was like. What are you doing? What are you like? That's the good moment. And then there was other times I'd see a good moment. He'd be off doing something else. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the picture. <laughs> that's the picture. Or they're like, they're you know, I just can see the picture in my head. You mm -hmm. know, like the guitar player is on somebody's table mm -hmm. playing guitar, and everybody's like looking up like this. I'm like, I would shove people out of the way to get a low angle of yeah. that. Like yeah. looking at that, that's a yeah. dope picture. Yeah. You know, so you did the black rifle thing, and it was yes. a motorsports event. So yes. first of all, how was that shooting something that was not even remotely close to hunting? It was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't shoot as much of the motorsports as I thought I was going to. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess a background on the event. It I forget what the event was called, but it's at a place called Mid America Outdoors, mm -hmm. which is essentially a huge property that Travis Pastrana uh, developed to basically make it like a cool place for people to go do a bunch of the stuff that like people like to do with motor vehicles. He made a huge track that they race UTVs on. Uh, they race those electric, like they're called E-Class or E-Series or something, uh, like electric rally cars essentially. They race, uh, I'm sure they would race the gas-powered ones. Um, and they had, like, these Volkswagen bugs. They had a whole separate class. Baja bugs? Yeah. Yeah. They had those. Uh, and so he custom-made this entire track. It's really big. Uh, and then there was all these trails through the woods that people could ride. There was a miniature pit bike track specifically for pit bikes. Uh, which, if you don't know what those are, they're like just miniature 110 cc uh, motocross bikes that usually you like kids ride, or yeah. they call them pit bikes because they've I guess use them in the pits just yeah. to like get around the mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. But now, after I guess JT, uh, one of the founders of Black Rifle, and Travis were just shooting the crap one day, and they're like, we should start do like pit bike racing, mm -hmm. and they've made. They do, like, a couple pit bike races every once in a while, and it's become, like, this kind of niche thing. So they made a whole track for that. There was 
a pond that a guy did like freestyle jet skiing in uh and then there was a like a rock crawler uphill course um just lots of horsepower and adrenaline yeah there was a whole pool i heard there was a drag strip somewhere at one point i saw a helicopter land (laughs) uh they had a barbie jeep slip and slide race (laughs) like there's a lot going on and that's not i didn't even see half of it um but we were there with Black Rifle because Black Rifle was uh, sponsoring like part of I, either the whole event or parts of the event. They were invo- they had a pit bike team, and then um, they had a booth, and obviously they had maybe four or five of their athletes there, uh, as well as a few personalities uh, that they that they are I guess are influencers to Mm -hmm. some extent for them so uh, I showed up and my job wasn't to like cover the whole event because there was photographers out there was a lot of photographers I can't Mm -hmm. say what I was going to (laughs) say there's there was a lot of photographers and videographers there that were dedicated to covering all the racing and just the event as a whole Black Rifle brought us or hired us subsequently I went to get a bunch of content for them of their people wearing and using a lot of the Black Rifle merch and... RTDs and stuff like that. RTDs and... Ready to drink for those out there. And um, they're trying to get ahead of some of the content for the summer. Um, Because if you guys don't know, when you see content that's like 4th of July themed or Easter themed or Christmas themed that wasn't shot... Then it was probably shot a month or two they or three. They got up that morning and they yeah. shot it and they put it <laughs> together real fast and then put it out. Yeah, the uh, most companies are working a month or more in advance making that stuff. So in theory, I hope they're working more than a month ahead. Yeah, uh, we were working on like Fourth of July stuff and then a bunch of just general imagery for. I want to say a lot of the stuff that we were shooting I've seen before, so I think it's out but I'm not 100% certain um, because I had, like, there were some pieces I didn't see. So I don't know what pieces of clothing and stuff was going to be released and what stuff was new. Uh, And then they also brought the Tactisquatch. So we did a bunch of content with Tactisquatch and then a bunch of content of, like I said, their their athletes doing cool stuff. Um, Some of it was kind of more setup shoots and some of it was just, uh, them in their events so yeah. i shot the pit bike race and i shot um pastrana racing uh his his like the electric rally car i need to figure out what the name is of that is so that i can say it correctly but racing that a couple times and then uh also they had a nitro circus event at the very end of everything so i shot that as well not a, not a fun trip at all no not i mean you know <laughs> it's you wouldn't enjoy it, probably. <laughs> uh, no, it was a lot of fun. I shot 11,000 pictures. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next, like your breakdown on. We talked about it a little bit this week in the in the reels, but I was going to get you to break that down. Yeah, I shot 11,000 pictures. Uh, for the most part, I was shooting one body for most of the stuff, except for some of the races, I shot two bodies. So I would sling one, and then I had a like a cotton carrier belt uh attachment that I put the other one on. Mm-hmm. So for things like the pit bike race, um, Pastrana's race, Nitro Circus, I always had two bodies on me so that I didn't have to go back to wherever my stuff was to change bodies and I didn't have to carry a backpack with all my stuff. It's called Pro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a- it actually worked out pretty nice. It worked out really well. Um, but I shot 11,000 pictures. I think I ended up delivering... 1,336, mm-hmm. and they wanted 500. Nice. So I th- think th- you did a good job. Yeah, I exceeded that by 800 yeah. pictures. A little little over 100, and was that 120%, 130% over? Uh, no, well, if uh, it depend, I guess it depends on what your How 100% you, is. That math's not our thing. Because it would be, if, 100, if 500 pictures is a 100%, then 1,000 pictures would be 200%. And then three would be like 30. Mm. So 230%. 230%. I like it. 
Well, um, they were happy with them. We had, you know, uh, their their marketing guy got a hold of us a couple times and said he was really happy with them, and that's what we do. So about 10%, just over, smidge over 10% 11. delivered, 11, 11% finished images out of 11,000 over, what, three and a half-ish shooting days, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I, I'm usually around the 10%. I think that it might have been less had there not been as many uh, product stuff. Uh, because with the product images, if it's a good image, uh, I'll deliver it because I never know like what exactly they're going to want for whatever they're doing with it. Um, you know, so when you take product images, you know, maybe somebody's wearing a particular shirt while well, you're going to shoot them wearing that shirt in a bunch of different poses and a bunch of different like uh, fields of view so you might do a wide and a medium and a tight and you might come off to the side and you might do a vertical and a horizontal and mm -hmm. like yeah. you know in that one shirt maybe you've got 25 or 30 pictures and if you were just trying to pick the best picture maybe you'd get five yeah. but when you're delivering to uh, when you're delivering to a client I, I don't necessarily know which ones they're going to want to use so you, so you give them, them all the options so yeah. that they can use whichever one it is Th those reels, or not the reels, the like stop motion ones that you put together, did you deliver those to? Which one? The the the, the, the bursts the where they slung the stuff at him? Uh, yeah. You did mm -hmm. deliver those? Cool. Yeah. And all the raws to make them. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was those. a cool trip. Um, was semi-jealous that I've been watching Travis, Travis Pastrana forever and ever and ever, even though I'm not like a action sports junkie. I mean, I think pretty much everybody knows who Travis Pastrana is. It's ever driven a vehicle or has any wants to go one fast. I mean, he's pretty much a legend. Yeah, he is. So you said he's pretty cool. Oh, dude. really chill. Yeah. Like stupid chill. And you got to meet one of your favorite people to watch it, Caleb. Oh yeah. I got to meet him. He was really fun. Yeah. He was running. Well, he's around cool. His name's Caleb. So obviously mm -hmm. well, I guess there's a lot of people. Named What's Caleb. his last name? Francis. Caleb Francis off of TikTok. Yep. He's a nut. Yep. He's really fun. Um, JT, I had never met JT before. He was really fun. Um, there was a bunch of people there. Yeah, very cool. Well, hopefully we get to do more of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we want to talk about the film. What are we, 19 minutes in, 20 minutes in? Good. Yeah. All right, so here's what we're going to do, and tell me if you agree with this, because we're kind of doing this on the fly. Watch it all the way through. Don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then watch it through in chunks and break some things down. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let me see if I can get this open. So I want to convert to the MacBook. Can you still? Yes, you can still hear us. I think. Yes, you can still hear us because that's coming through there. All right, now. If you're in the see. chat, reply affirmative so that we know that you can still hear what's going on. And if you can't hear when we start playing the video, if you can't hear it, let us know so that we can troubleshoot that. Because I think we went through the whole video yep. last time and didn't know. So here's the film. So I hunt in an earn a bug zone, which I kind of find an interesting term because when you really think about it, don't we really all just earn our buck? So earn a buck really equates to you've got to go out and shoot an antlerless deer before you can shoot your antler deer. But really when I think about earning a buck, I think about all of the work that goes into earning a buck. Work such as clearing shooting lanes, hanging tree stands, working on mock scrapes, getting trail cameras in place, and various habitat improvements.
searching for music for your next video? Mm -hmm. Then you need to Sorry, check out guys. our list. With amazing new music. Overall, there's really a big price that's paid when it comes to trying to earn the buck. Valuable time away from family and friends and just to chase that one dream of some big antlers. So first things first, we gotta get that antlerless deer. With the objective of punching an antlerless tag completed, it's time to focus on the month of October and chasing antlers. But as the days of October pass by and we get through the legendary October lull, we know that towards the end of October, the pre-rut conditions will set us up perfectly for what's to come. And then there's the moment we've all been waiting for. November. Thank you. 
that really just happen? I don't believe it. Deer season should not be defined by the moment the arrow leaves the string, but rather the story of our deer season is better told through the many months of hard work leading up to that one moment of anticipation. The mass on him. Thank you, old boy. That moment is fleeting, but all the work tells a story that can last a lifetime. We all have a story to tell, and we all earn that button. All right, that's the first watch through. Now, let me see, I think I can do this to where I can add, I'm gonna try and do this real quick, add a, Video capture device, camera two, okay. Device cam link here, okay. Oh, I look right in the bottom corner, don't you think? All right, so <coughs> let's go back to here, and they should be able to see us I will on the monitor. stream. I will monitor we'll this. Monitor. All right. So, so what were your overall uh, yeah. initial thoughts? Let me get back to the very beginning here. I'm going to restart this. Oh, of course, got to flip it ad. You know, with all the information, with all the information that I know these companies have on us, mm -hmm. if I already have the product, can I not get your ad? Mm. Like, Adobe, don't need your ads. I've got the whole suite. All of us do. The oh, whole office. They they're going to come out with new stuff, though. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Art list, I, tired of it. Soundstripe, tired of it. I ha yeah, We have yeah, those. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So, um, It's working. Okay, initial thoughts to me. I'm going to just get the opening frame up so it's not a black frame here. I'm just going to get through this opening little scene. There we go. I'll just leave this New Day production outdoors up there so it's got a little, yeah. little aesthetic. You like yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um finally worried about aesthetics so I, and, and he said this in his email i wouldn't consider that a film i'd consider that a, a web episode but i understand what films and criteria have been set in the outdoor industry that's not a film that's a web show but with that being said um a couple things that stood out i'm going to go with the positives before i go with the negatives um, positives was a lot of his hunt footage and deer footage was really, really well done. It was nice and clean, and it looks like he was shooting on some sort of Sony mirrorless. Um, audio was good throughout. Uh, in terms of spoken word, was good. Um, and uh, he did a really good job self-filming because that's a way better job than I would have done self-filming. Um, what give you your positives before we go into a couple of negative things that I'm going to point out. Yeah, I mean, I think mine would fall along the same lines, I think, um, especially uh, the footage leading up to the hunts I thought was really good. Mm -hmm. um, I know self-filming hunts is really hard, so um, I think there was a, like a, you could tell the difference between like the work footage and the hunt footage, but I mean, you can do that with almost any footage ever. So mm -hmm. um, that's not a negative. I think overall it was filmed really, really well. Um, you could see that there was uh, an obvious understanding of composition and lighting and um, shot progression mm -hmm. and movement in the shots. He understood sequencing. I mean, yep. he could sequence fairly well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it was shot very well. I think that the audio was good. Um I think that he told the story that he wanted to tell very well. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, overall, very, very solid piece. Okay. So, now let's go with uh, the critique part. Um, first thing that I noticed was this first shot that's open. Obviously, there is a lot of orange and red in that. 
that could have been taken out in color correction. Um, that's probably straight out of the camera. I don't know if he added that color. If he did, if it was a stylistic choice, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't flow throughout the whole thing. But um, he probably, I don't know, it, that, that drone doesn't look like it's the best quality shot. But, I, I mean, he's got cool drone shots in here. Um, but the, the, the orange and the red on there just kind of throws me off because it doesn't match the colors once we come back into the scene. Um, second thing was the mix of GoPro B-roll in with his main camera. They just are so different looking. That really threw me off because the GoPro doesn't look good and his Sony mirrorless looks really good. Um, I, th that juxtaposition really threw me off a couple times. I, I didn't mind it as a second angle of it looking back at him, but when he used a couple shots, like he had like a, a, a panning shot, which we'll show it in a minute, of his bow in the tree. Like I would have liked to have seen that on the Sony camera. Um, he had like a walking shot through the woods, and it was obviously on one of those little things that chases him. That was obviously GoPro. Did not look good. Um, a couple of those GoPro shots really threw me off. Um, the next thing that I noticed was him transitioning. He used a lot of fades to blacks. Um, and he, that he just he just kind of defaulted to fade to black to get him to the next spot instead of using J and L cuts, which I think there was a couple places a J and L cut would have worked perfectly to get to the next scene and really not cheapened his edit as much. If you listen to this on headphones, there's a lot of audio smoothing that could have taken place, lots of harsh cuts that could have very easily been smoothed up in post production. Um, and there was one more thing I wanted to point to that were like the standouts to me that were easy fixes. Um, Rangers over here shaking. Um, it'll come to me. What were your couple standouts to you? I oh, think he didn't end his songs. He just faded his songs out. That bothered mm. me. Yeah, I would say the big standouts that I would have uh, liked to see kind of worked on would be the – it felt blocky. Um, so I – and I think – a lot of that is because of just fading out the songs and um, just fading to black. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some parts where the, uh, like, fading to black and coming into the interview kind of, like, highlighted this, like, hard stop. Mm -hmm. And so there it didn't carry momentum through scene to scene. Um, and so you could, like, tell... I could feel the the different scenes uh, very distinctly mm -hmm. uh, instead of it kind of coming in and out. It felt more like a hard stop Ver versus than, a roller coaster than ride, like a slow down and mm -hmm. transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a couple of audio things that I noticed. Uh, a couple really minute color things that I that I noticed. Um, but those are really more specific. Um, I think just the major overall points for me would be, uh, the edit felt a little blocky and the transitions were a little awkward. And I personally, I feel like I've heard this story a lot. Um, and I would have liked to see maybe a kind of a different take on that story. Uh, it feels like it feels like the same story that I've heard a lot, which is you've got to do the work to get the buck, yeah. and the hunt isn't the kill. The hunt is all the work, which mm. is true yeah. and is very valid. Um, I just feel like I've seen that story. I've been a part of telling that story a lot, and so for me personally, it, it doesn't strike a lot of interest in the story itself because, like, I know where it's going. In fact, I really love the start where he talked about I'm in an earn a buck unit. Uh, I not being like, you know, a lifelong hunter. I think that's in Nebraska. Pretty sure it's in Nebraska. I had heard of earn a buck mm -hmm. unit, earn a buck stuff, but I'm not very familiar. So I was very interested at first because I was like, oh, it might be like something about more specifically the earn a buck something. I couldn't tell you what. Um, but I was interested, and it felt like like I had not heard that mm -hmm. talked about before. That was something that I had never heard in like any of the stuff that we've done, any stuff that I've really seen. So I was pretty excited because like, oh, this is something new. Um, 
and then when it transitioned to like gotta kill it's dough also yeah. Yeah. like a you it's an earn a buck unit but everybody earns their buck i was like oh man it's like the it's gonna be the typical oh you've got to do the work to get the uh to get the he's in now. buck he's in so he's listening portion Derek's of Indi- indiana yeah and that's so Derek. so everybody that's on the live stream uh new day outdoors obviously as the screen says that's Derek craig the guy who did this film which um i think that's a very subjective thing for me like the story mm-hmm. um like i said before did a great job of telling that particular story i'm just Really, like, I want to see new stories. Well, that's what I'm... And ca- so, Not only new stories, but, I like, am, even you know? if it's... Even if it's the story's not unique, which the story's not unique, how's how do we dig a little deeper and tell the same story in a different way? Like, okay, if it's about hard work and earning a buck, what are some facets to that that haven't been shown? Well, obviously, we know you got to go hang stands. We know you got to m- make mock scrapes. We know you got to do all these things. We know you got to kill a doe. Um... Why not show the side of the story where you show yourself donating the dough? Or why don't you show the side of the story where um, you missed, you know, you missed a buck? Or you, uh, what's the, how do we do this a little different? How do we recreate the wheel? And that's how I would have liked to have seen it approach. It's like, okay, this isn't, what I'm doing isn't new and novel. So how do I take what I'm doing? Because this is what I have. These are the, this is the, opportunity that I have how do I take that story and like like I'm I don't I'm assuming I think pretty sure Derek's married with kids I'm not 100% sure but say let's say he was if he isn't um you know obviously he's working obviously he's trying to get off like spending time with his family to take that time away cuz he he mentioned it mm-hmm. show that to me um yeah, I think it would be a funny comedy to negotiate hunting time with the little lady like how do you negotiate your hunting time and then go kill something. I think that'd be funny. That's a new take on it. You, you know, you got to put in the work, and the work is really like, I got to go buy my wife some new clothes so I can go hunt. Mm-hmm. That would have been funny to me. Like to see a different take on the work because everybody hangs stands, everybody makes mock scrapes, everybody does that. Well, show the work of all the things you had to do with the family to get the time off or to get the time away or to not get yelled at when you get home. Like that would have been a cool take for it for me. But do we even watch through this and kind of pick some points out? Yeah, I would say just okay. overall, though, I mean, very, very solid yeah. video. I I liked it. It was shot very well, um, edited very well. Um, overall, good video. I mean, I could yeah. see why in, uh, you know, a contest that came away with a W. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just like to say that so that when I nitpick, it's, yeah, oh, it's not Yeah, we're going to nitpick. Cause so you, can, you can ask Caleb. I'm the... I don't. I'm the nitpickiest. Mm-hmm. I'm Have probably we got any one qu- of the questions on here. Anybody remember this one? Broken Straw Media said that he was one of the judges. Nice. And this was his pick for first place. Great video. I echoed during the interview, and I had the same issue. Portion was in Indiana. Okay, so cool. So we're gonna go through kind of shot by shot, I scene by scene. I've ever, I don't think I've ever been to Indiana to film anything. I've only been to Indiana to go to the ATA show. I've never filmed anything there. Yeah. So. It's like uh, Ohio. I don't think I've ever been there. I don't know, I have to, in Ohio. To film anything. You like Ohio? <laughs> no. Not a fan. It's all just right. interesting because you would think that, you know, I would have been to, like, all those states trying to film whitetails. Yeah. No. There's some states I just haven't been to yet. Just spend a lot of time in Iowa and Illinois. Oh, a lot of time. <laughs> Utah, actually. I spent a lot of time in Utah, yeah. strangely enough. All right. So we're going to sh- not break this down shot by shot, but probably scene by scene, kind of in little chunks. So uh, well, I might. Pu- I might. Like certain things, I'm yeah. stop it. All right, we're gonna start up right here. First shot is the colors off for that. Not everybody's gonna notice that. It's the first thing I noticed. I do like the uh, sound design here. I think. Hold on. If you wanted to really level up your sound design, um, turn, I like. We can turn this up here too. Yeah, I like. I like that wind. Mm-hmm. The only thing that you could level up your sound design is like you guys can't see. I gotta use the mouse. Need an external mouse so I could sit over here too. We need like a like two co- like two controllers like a freaking student pilot aircraft. Because <laughs> uh, you got this road here, uh, you could put like some light traffic noise like real low to yeah. where you could barely perceive it. I think that would level up really cementing that. Uh, you've also got this river here, so you could put you know some small river noises or something like that. 
you'd have to mess with the mix so it didn't sound like you were right on the river, but I think that would kind of add a couple dimensions to the audio uh, where it would really cement it. Oh, you can pu you can space. Mm -hmm. I like these shots. These were good. I also like this shot. I really like this shot. Pulling focus on the arrow and not the target. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really good shot. Um, so I like those. I also like the music choice here. The music choice feels um, modern, feels new. And I the don't second song or that one hypey song coming up is one I've heard nine thousand times, so yeah. I don't like it. I like this music. I yeah. I I think I heard that music and it definitely like that's part of what was like, oh, it's got kind of a new feel to it. Yeah, I'm gonna pull this over so I okay, can see if anything fine. comes up. So I hunt in an urn about his own. This is also a, I like this interview set up a yeah. lot. Um I'm I I'm curious if it's all natural, if you used any modifiers. Did you use any um, modifiers, Craig? Because it, uh, it looks very good. Uh, I like how casual it is. Mm -hmm. I like that it just feels like you kind of went and set up a camera and you're talking to people, mm -hmm. and the lighting is really good in it. Mm -hmm. um, Especially solid. on the second angle. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which I kind of find. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice shot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it must just be the two uh, – the two – kind of sources of light from inside of there because you kind of got a nice... Yeah. And an interesting turn because when you really think about it, don't we really all just earn our buck? Yeah, so that, earn that a buck shot really happens equates to... You've you got to go out and shoot... So if we back that up, like you can see he's already released the arrow. Earn a buck really equates to... So you've got to go out and shoot an antlerless uh -oh, deer before you really out. think about it. Don't we really all just earn our buck? So that this drone shot, you can see he's already shot, like he's already released, and then they're so earn a buck really equates to you've got to go out and shoot an antlerless deer. Listening to it in headphones, um, the audio of the shots, it sounds like he panned it, so it sounds like it's stereo panned um, right to left, which is cool. Uh, but on top of the talking, it kind of like bashes with it a little bit. I had two live stands mm -hmm. with diffusers. Nice. Uh, so uh, it is cool that you stereo panned it. That's something not like hardly anybody ever messes with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a really cool effect. I think that I might have saved that for or used it in a in a part where there wasn't talking, so that you could really feel that because as it is, it kind of. What runs did you into notice with this shot? The first thing I notice is he is shooting eerily close to his camera. <laughs> Because he's got it directly in front, and those arrows are coming right by it. <laughs> I noticed. I, I didn't really notice it, but I've also had to put my camera that close. Yeah. Because Dudley was like, put your camera right here. And I was like, okay. you sure? And he's <laughs> like, I'm Dudley. Yes. <laughs> he said, if I wreck your camera, I'll call Caleb. I was like, all right. <laughs> or you can shoot your antler deer. Yeah. Hear it? It's yeah. definitely yeah. moving. Yeah. So but like really to me, I, right there, yep. I would have liked to, like that music is kind of, you've mm -hmm. got that pace, it's methodical. I would have liked for there, personally, with my style, that how I edit things often, I would have taken that and then tried to increase the pace using maybe a, a quicker part of the song and do something there. Uh, I don't know what you would do, but I would, like right there is a perfect place to You've been going like this and like this and like this and like this, and boom, you can come up a little bit in it. So, and then you hear right here at the end of this when the song goes out, the audio just goes to nothing. There's no ambient. There's no nothing. There's nothing to, it just, there's that period at the end instead of that flow and the next thing. And it's just those audio cues, especially if you're listening to it with headphones, which I, I don't I doubt much, many of you are, you can hear that, that sound and that song go to nothing. And then there's a slight gap where there nothing happens of just dead air, and then it comes back up. I would love to ha had that that smoothed out because that would have just that little thing would have softened the transition just a hair. You need to listen to it right here. Goes but really, nothing, when I think comes about back versus it let that arrow hit and had your audio, Derek, come over the top of that uh, that happening or the. Like, l l hear you talking underneath that arrow hitting. 
and that cut transition us into the next scene versus it go to nothing, and then you start talking. You could also leave so you can, if you're wanting to do that, as the arrow hits, leave that shot linger, yeah. right? You let that shot hang and keep that keep that ambient audio underneath it. Yeah. And so as you leave that shot hang, you're giving your audience a little bit of time, and they're like, okay, we're, we're waiting for something. And then you put in your audio, you do that L cut, so you J cut, you put in your audio underneath, and you've still got that ambient audio, and then now all of those things, it doesn't feel like there's a hard, it doesn't feel like there's a line there through your edit, right? Yeah. It feels well, like Well, there's physically staggered. a line there. You, there's a physically a line there, right. if you think about it. Yeah, so now now you're staggered, and you can, I would even keep this, the, the ambient audio playing, mm-hmm. and like personally I might find like an ambient track to put under the interviews that sounds like it might be rooted in that environment. Or like and that last shot, that last shot that hits, you could have the just him walking in the grass to go pull his arrows. You could have had that just mm-hmm. ch- 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 walking back to the target. There's, there's tons of stuff you could have had under there. Earning a buck. I think about all of the work that goes into earning a buck. And that shot's really green. Yeah, I was going to say. shot's a touch green too. A lot of this forest stuff is got some green in a lot of the shadows mm-hmm. and a lot of the midtones, which is going to happen when you shoot in like the forest because mm-hmm. it's just so green. Um, it's a pretty easy fix, honestly. You could go into your Lumetri color panel uh, and you go to the curves and you go to the green curve. Uh, I mean, you could white balance it too to put a little pink in there, but sometimes I feel like it's hard because that puts pink everywhere, and you might not want pink everywhere. You might want pink only in a certain range of, like, the darks or the shadows. Um, and so you could either white balance it a little bit more pink, or you could go into the curves, go to the green gamma curve, and mess with it down kind of in the shadows and introduce some pink to cancel out that, and you'll you'll be able to bring, like, some of these areas especially back to what's more natural. Yeah. I think what gives it away a lot is like the green is the hat, green yeah. in the hat and like the green on the tree trunk cuz I know like when I'm in a forest that doesn't look green, it looks whatever color it is, sometimes kind of brown, maybe white if it's if it's not, but Yeah. All right, rolling on. I like this shot. This shot. That shot was really good. This is the song I'm talking about. I've heard the song a thousand times. And this is the shot I'm talking about. So you have those really pretty Sony mirrorless shots and then this GoPro shot that just does not look as good. And it just, because look at everything's, everything's in focus, but nothing's sharp. It's all just kind of milky and it's got like a shutter something. Like you stop on this frame and see everything just looks soft. Um, and I can just tell that's not off that Sony. It's off a GoPro or something like it. work and you can tell by that last frame too like everything's in focus like where do I look I mean obviously I know to look at him but it just not a fan I also think there I would have used that opportunity to again introduce like a high pace segment yeah also when you're like talking about work I think it fits really well and the pacing of that song you can really do something very quick with it um I might have used that opportunity for like a work montage and I would have maybe liked to have seen like faster, harder cuts, like mm-hmm. more work, more yeah. this, tights, you know. Showing wiping sweat, show him changing clothes, taking boots off, you know, wiping dust and dirt off of him, you know. Like there's just so many opportunities to, to blow through that scene and make it like really engaging mm-hmm. versus, you know, you know, a scene of raking, a scene of cutting, a scene of walking out. Um, you know, you could have produced one, just take up, you know, an afternoon and just produce the crap out of working the heck out of something. Work such as clearing shooting lanes, hanging tree stands, working on mock scrapes, getting trail cameras in place, and various habitat improvements. That shot, that drone shot is much better. A lot of these I shots are the, really good. Yeah, I, I saw the, the focus pop on that one on the autofocus. Mm. And more green again. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. 
It looked like it was on a slider. Yeah. Introducing that custom t-shirts. Sorry. Sticker Mule makes it easy Jesus. to turn any design into a custom shirt. I hope you're making some money off those. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Less green than that. Where's the sponsor plug, dog? <laughs> I like this shot. That was a good shot. Overall, there's really a big price that's paid when it comes to trying to earn the buck. Valuable time away from family and friends and just to chase that one dream of some big antlers. Yeah, I think I just would like this to be higher place. Yeah. Somewhat of a transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah somewhat of a transition. The first see, thing, but see, you, you you go to black there. You did not need to go to black. You in that song, just trim the end of that song off. Match beats up in that song, and let that drone shot hang over. You start talking again, and let that song end. It does the exact same thing, and it doesn't cheapen the edit. Get rid of that black. First, we, we got to get, get that antler the steer. A repetitive shot for me. Mm -hmm. well, that, and that to me, that the walking sounds a little loud too. There's that really orange, red, you know, looking. There's another one. Just col the color correction could make those a lot better. Another black. See, I don't think you had to go to black there either. And that sh that shot's green too. But see how much better that shot looks in that GoPro when you go to the GoPro shot? Like, I like that. I mean, I, it's probably a cutaway or recreate, but I just like that shot better. That shot's green, too, but that's off the GoPro. The song here has something weird in it to me. Like, it... For a little bit, I couldn't figure out if it was, like, traffic noises. Or, like, a droning. Yeah, like, that droning almost sounds like traffic noises a mm. little bit. Yeah. And so I couldn't figure out if it was traffic noises or just the song. And uh, I think that, personally, I wouldn't want that unless, like, I was hunting really close to a road and wanted, you know, like, that was part of the sound environment there. might be close to a road. I don't know. But it sounds like the song, at least. Yeah. So if it's the song, I, I might shy away from that part. I do like how in this, which we're going to get to, like you can see he's genuinely excited because he's shaking all over. Look at him shaking. I like, I like seeing the bow come across the dough, though. That, like that puts you there. Like that's, this is really happening. But it, that should have lined up. So, like, if we're going to make that cut, that cut should come in there as the bow starts to move instead of you getting the bow all the way across. See, I can, and because the camera's to your right, so you've already passed it. Just for continuity purposes, it probably should have been moved over. But again, we're nitpicking. Look at him shaking. You see the end of zero just vibrating. Yeah, I'm not. I think this song is. I don't like the song. It's just here. too. It's too over the top. It sounds like E. T. <laughs> <laughs> like it sounds like an E. T. Song. Yeah. And I don't feel good. It don't is feel traffic. Like oh, okay. Nice. Well. Well, that makes sense then. There it is. Well, that's fine then, because if it's if it's not the song, then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the the you can also like if the traffic was really loud and you want to get rid of it, you could find probably like a like a audio. And kind of layer a couple things. And, 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 and it, make a bed. Yeah. Or you could take that and lower it so it's not as prevalent. And then put a couple of ambient audio tracks with it uh, that are clean. That way it's not like right in your ears. It's just there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know about that song. <laughs> 
Like it makes me feel something bad is going to happen, not yeah. necessarily suspense. Yeah. Being shaken. He's excited. He's excited. Mm. I like the fact they show both shots. Yeah, you usually see that. You can hit it. You can hear it hit too. Boom. Most this shots out of focus. You bother me. It's focused right there. Then it goes out of focus on the auto, and now everything's out of focus. Off, uh, yeah. And again, this song just kind of comes up, comes back, and goes With the black. The objective of punch again. You don't need the black there. Ching and Aunt Lois tag completed. It's time to focus on the, the month playing. of October yeah. and chasing yeah. antlers. I like what you do with this calendar thing. I think you could have built 11 years ago, oh, we on. cut down a forest. Come on, we built Jocko. a small timber frame factory. Jocko trying to get them bucks. Mm -hmm. As the days of October pass by and we get through the legendary See, October Look how good some of this hunt footage looks. Like it's really good October, footage. The pre-rut conditions And then I see that GoPro mixed in and just, eh, I don't like it. And then some of these could have, you know, really and popped there's some the color correction. we've all been waiting for. November. November. Slider. Yeah, see, I would have, again, wanted that to pick up into something. Yeah. Because you have that dramatic build and that drop, and then it just You could have put a, like a, this sequence, like this gear up sequence could have been like boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yeah, to that music that you had just developed. Yeah, like a truck blowing down the road, gearing up at the truck. Like you could have really sequenced out a really high energy Peace going into this. Just remember that roller coaster. I'm going to take them on that roller coaster ride right up and down, up and down. Yeah, see there, that, that th there's some really harsh spots in the audio here that could be smoothed up. Don't, don't, they, they just, you can hear the popping in the different scenes. You could really smooth that up easily. Drum shot of orange. That one should be more orange. Mm -hmm. Or add orange into that second shot. Now, see that shot? That shot, I didn't like that shot. Because that, that you mix that, that really pretty mirrorless footage in with that. And, I mean, that's obviously GoPro. Look, everything's milky. Everything's supposedly in focus, but it's not in focus. That just, that really, like... So that stood out to me is that it's really, really nice, really, really nice, really, really clean. Then it just kind of got cheapened right there. Like that shot could have been done on the big camera and it would have not slowed me down at all. Like that shot, like, look how good that shot was. And that one's reversed. You notice, you notice that? This one's reversed. He reversed that oh, shot. Yeah. So that's him putting them up. Mm, sneaky. Mm, yeah, well, we've done that before. Reverse. Whoop. Oh, yeah, you can tell. <laughs> Big box. Big box. <laughs> See, I don't mind the GoPro shot there as a second angle. That doesn't bother me at all. I think you just might need to match the colors a touch closer. Yeah. It's easier said than done. And he's editing the music well. I mean, the song's got that drone in it, and he slows the deer up and speeds the deer up. I'm not a huge fan of this song either. Yeah, it's too over the top for me. But it's just a pirates. But it's a styly, it's a style choice for sure. Yeah. Feels like Pirates of the Caribbean. Thing. And, and how it just fades out here. Yeah, I would have liked to have end it with some punctuation mark or play through with the kill you just gotta mm -hmm. find the right part of the song mm. smoke you see him go ass over tea kettle right there that's awesome it's a really cool shot mm -hmm. yes sir did that really just happen oh another thing I was gonna say is the interviews 
Like he could have talked through some of those interviews in the field and not had to have the interviews too. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the f- working and talking, like he could have done all that. You know, we, most of that could have been said in the field. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't personally like the talking here because it feels out of place because you haven't talked to the camera yeah. the whole time. And then you talked here and it just seemed kind of like a little out of the style that you had set up previously. Yeah, yeah we've been a fly personally. on the wall the whole time and now we're talking directly to the audience. Go ahead, Ranger. This song is a little epic too. GoPro footage mixed in again. That's a good shot. So Sony just looks so good. Deer season should not be defined by deer the moment duck is the audio. arrow meets the string. But rather, the story of our deer season is better told through the many months of hard work leading up to that one moment of anticipation. The mass on him. Thank you, old boy. That moment is fleeting, but all the work tells a story that can last a lifetime. Another thing I noticed, we all have a like, story to tell. This is self-filmed. I mean, we all. He did every bit of this by himself. Shot yeah. it, edited, set up everything. And I mean, like, we can sit here and, you know, say, well, you could have done this, you could have done this, but like, that's a lot of work to set up that many shots and that many scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean, I think, I mean, I think it was. I think he did a great job, man. I really do. I mean, could could there could you have improved something? Absolutely, but heck, we could too. I mean, we could sit here and critique things that we did last week. And we could nitpick it, um, but in terms of t- to me, the biggest thing that would have added value is to get rid of the blacks in your songs, fix some of the colors, and get rid of those some of those cheapy B-roll, B-roll shots that are GoPro, and smooth out some audio things, man. And it's next level good. Um, and those are all like really easy things to do. Um, and if you don't know how to do those things or you aren't sure how to do those things, then that's something we can probably talk about. Um, that actually might be really cool to do. What if he sent us a drive with that on Premiere and we could, like, clean up a few of those things and, like, show them how we would clean it up? Yeah, I always feel bad breaking in other people's projects. I know. I'm just Even if it's, like, Thinking clay. out loud here. Even if it's clay. <laughs> it's like a sanctity of their project file. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> you know, I don't like it when people come in my stuff. It's like coming in my room and reorganizing it. Like, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I don't appreciate that very much. I mean, if somebody wants us to do it, I fine yeah but then see there's the problem is one i have once it's in my hands i have now it's, it's i got good. now i gotta do like the rire thing and it's <laughs> i don't have self-control i'll do that one then i'll, I'll i because i can i can just push it away and be done with it you can't no <laughs> no i can't i become very nitpicky but uh that's that's the review um you got anything else that you would add I uh, know. I think you summed it up. I think it, it super solid piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, especially in and he's been self filming for a, l- a number of years and talked to him and he's just crazy passionate about self filming himself. <laughs> Good for you because that is not what I want to do. Um, it's just not. But it takes a special person with a special kind of patience to be able to do it, and I'm just not that guy. But uh, I've got to go now and get my dad, and we got to go Come pick on. up the thing. Come on, oh, yeah, stand up here. We, everybody Come wants on. to see you, Ranger. Come on. He's going to be weird about it all of a sudden. Everybody say hey to Ranger before we go. It's, there we go. There's Ranger. Can he, there he is. There he is. Come on. Come this way. Why are you being weird about it all of a sudden? There you go. There's Ranger. There's Ranger. All right. He's actually been pretty good. Usually he's kind yeah. of a crackhead, but yeah. he's been he's been chilling. I think he got the vibe like, hey, you know what? I probably should chill for Dad. He's working. Mm, dogs. All right. Peace. Peace. <laughs>